Hey guys, welcome back to the bug bounty series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at stored HTML injection uh, in and uh, the particular use case or example is going to be of a blog. All right. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, this is when things get a little bit interesting now, because uh, if you understand what's going on here is that this HTML code is going to be stored on the server, which means any client that visits this web page uh, will be infected or will get the result of what we have essentially inserted uh, or injected into the web page. So again, this can be explained really, really simply. And of course, it won't make much sense if we just simply put an H1 tag in there. However, let me explain the example a bit. Now, this uh, the, the reason they use the blog example is because uh, in many blogs or with many of the blog editors, you are able to uh, actually modify or uh, mark up your particular blog post in HTML. And the reason that is, is because HTML originally is a markup language. So that really makes sense. Now, of course, uh, you know, con content management systems like uh, WordPress, uh, will have ways of detecting this, especially when talking about malicious code and using various tags that are really malicious in, in nature. One of them being an, an iframe, which is what we're going to be testing right now. However, the concept is very simple. Uh, once you insert this piece of HTML code, uh, it is going to affect every user on the website. So it's not only going to affect you. And that's why I said this is where things are going to get interesting. So one way of demonstrating this again can be done by uh, using an iframe here that will essentially tell us whenever a new user connects to the website and it will give us details about the client. All right. So to do this, we're going to use an iframe. And uh, the reason we'll use an iframe is, it, is it because it is uh, it is really is not detectable. And if we uh, we actually don't have a size for it, uh, it's it'll be very hard to detect uh, when inspecting the element or inspecting the various elements on the web page. So uh, the code is going to be very, very simple. Now, before I do that, if I just put in H1 here and I say test and I close that H1 tag, but just to simply show you what's going on and hit submit, you can see that it, it's going to add uh, the first blog post here. It has the owner date and the ID. And the entry is going to be the HTML code. However, you can see that it does successfully uh, post that back to the server. And of course, you can test this by uh, let me let me just delete this and I will show you this in a second. So what I'm going to do is I will enter the same piece of code and we will see what's going on exactly here and uh, H1. All right. And because this is being stored on the server, you'll see what I mean. So. Let me just enable the foxy proxy here with burp and intercept is on and we're going to hit submit here and immediately you can see that this is a post request and that's primarily what i wanted to explain and we do have for the entry which is the actual data we do have some encoding for the special characters uh, or the symbols rather so uh, that is uh, we will get into that as we move along during this series and what that means um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to explain. So that means here that we can insert any uh, HTML code. And uh, of course, this is a very, very common attack now with websites that have been infected with malware. I'm pretty sure you already know of this. Uh, so let me just get let me just delete this. So uh, HTML injection or stored HTML injection can be used for various things. It can be used to, uh, to, to again, get user clients who are actually uh, logging onto that particular page. And I'll show you the how robust that is. Uh, and of course, it can be used to deface websites. You can include uh, iframes, redirections, all that good stuff. So let's get started with a simple iframe. And its job is to essentially post uh, all the information back to us. And that is to our attacker's IP. So if you're doing this over the internet, you can also configure it that way. So 192.168.1.101. And we want to do that on uh, port 1234. And we will do that on test. We'll just call that test here. Uh, so we're going to say set the height um, to zero and because that because we want to make it as undetectable as possible and uh, we're going to set the width again to something like zero here and uh, that's pretty much it for the iframe. So I'm just going to say iframe here and uh, once we hit submit, what's going to happen is um, all of the clients logging into this particular page. Uh, we'll get we will get their client data, the IP address, uh, the client information, all of that good stuff. So let me just open up a terminal here and uh, I will just enlarge it a little bit and clear that out. And I will set up a netcat listener on port 1234 and hit enter and I will just hit submit. All right. And once I've hit submit, you should see that my client information will send back. And the reason you know it's me is because of the IP address. That's my current IP. So it connected directly to me again. 
Uh, so the important information you can get, as you can see right over here, is you have information about the user agent, which tells you what browser the, the client might be using, the operating system. So that's a very basic attack. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know that this is only that this is working for anyone who actually accesses this website? So I can prove that to you by actually opening up another terminal here, and I'll increase the font size there as well. I'll also open up another Netcat listener, and I have my mobile device right next to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access this web server, and I'm going to access this particular web page. All right. So just give me a second. Let me just enter the details here. So the 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 server IP is uh, 192.168.1.105 and I will set up the listener now and we are going to connect to it so uh, let me just log in and we are looking for the HTML injection stored blog and hit hack and you should see my request right over here so you get important information like the IP address uh, important information like the user agent so you can see this is using Linux version uh, uh, using the uh, Android version 9 and it is a Poco phone so it was able to deduce that so this is a very basic example. Sorry about that, guys. So this is a very basic example of how stored HTML uh, injection can be used to leverage, uh, you know, a ton of functionality and can use to exploit users quite a bit. So again, I said this is a very, very simple attack. So let me just close that Netcat session here and I'll close that as well. All right. So uh, now that we've taken a look at a basic iframe attack, and of course, I'm not going to be covering all the ways in which you can attack or you leverage this vulnerability for a potential attack or a defacement attack. However, I'm going to show you uh, another great attack that many people use. And of course, it's used to target users that are oblivious to various content management systems. So uh, let us create a fake login form here. And what we will do is we'll inject it into the into this page here and it will display it for us and that attack can be used to force users to enter their username and password which will then be captured so i'm currently using the w3 schools editor here because it's the best editor to use online and i've created a simple html login form with the action again sending data back to uh, to our ip and with you know test.html just a basic uh, action here and so that's where all the data is going to be sent uh, so we have the fields username and password here and again, that's very, very simple. So again, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this code here and uh, we will go back into our HTML injection page and paste that right in here and hit submit. All right. And once that is submitted, you can see that we have the username and password entry. Now, uh, this is a very basic explanation of how this attack would go. When performing this attack, for example, on WordPress, one would clone the WordPress login page to make it look as realistic as possible. And because every blog post in WordPress or any other content management system has its own web page, uh, it will not be as uh, uh, as it is right now. This is a very simple web application that's demonstrating how, uh, you know, blog posts are stored, uh, all of that good stuff. So uh, if we set up the Netcat listener one more time and we just hit, uh, we, we type in the username and password here. So if, for example, we can say, uh, we can just say, there. let's try admin, why not? And the password is going to be password and just hit login. Uh, you can see immediately that uh, if we take a look at the get request here, that we, we get the parameters username with their value admin and password with the value password. All right. So now, th now that we've ac actually explained that, you can see the value of this attack. And if we just close the Netcat listener here, it takes us to that particular web page. And we can see that that action really did not do anything much in regards to a web application. And the user will then get an idea that they've been exploited. Uh, that being said, that's pretty much all that I wanted to explain in regards to stored HTML injection. Um, so again, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.